So number four then from paper one of the 2021 Advanced Higher Maths Resource Paper. Four back question here for solve this system of equations by using Gaussian elimination. Well, it's just a system of equations. You used to get that in the higher. And the way you can solve that is you just take them in pairs, multiply them appropriately so when you combine them, one of the variable disappears. Then you get it down to two variables. Then you just do the same again. And Gaussian elimination is really just a shorthand of that. It's also a shorthand of, if you like, the formal technique of matrix equations would be this. That could be written as a matrix, you don't need to do this. This could be written as a matrix equation by collecting the coefficients into a single matrix, one, two, one, three, negative one, two, negative two, three, and a, a lambda. Multiplying that by the variable, which is a little column matrix, because if you multiply this out using the rules for matrix multiplication, you just end up with this. And that would give you this result. Because if you multiply a three by three, by a three by one, you get a three by one. So that's the matrix equation. Now the way you solve that is you multiply both sides by the inverse of this, which is a messy thing to do. Another way of doing that is just to go through elementary row operations, which is essentially just adding them together and so on to make things disappear, to turn this, to turn this into the identity matrix, and at the same time, replicating those operations over here in which case you'll end up with x, y, z equals the solution. Now, Gaussian elimination just sort of goes halfway through that. It doesn't go all the way down to the identity matrix, which is just a row of ones in the middle with zeros everywhere. It just only goes as far as getting into upper triangular form, so that you just get zeros in this place. But in the end, it's just the same as just using that simple technique for solving the system of equations. So if you were carrying out those elementary row operations in this pair, since you're doing the same thing to this, as you're doing to that, you can do them to them both at the same time. And that's why the first thing you do is you form an augmented matrix by joining this matrix onto that matrix. One, two, one, three, negative one, two, negative two, three, lambda. And you can either put a dotted line, I'll just put a solid line. Five, four, negative eight. So that's the two of them joined together because the operations you carry out in this get replicated in this one, simply because if you have to multiply this by whatever, you have to multiply that by the same thing. Now, doing that, putting down the augmented matrix gets you the first mark. Now you carry out these elementary row operations, which remember, are just the same as multiplying and adding these together. But I don't want to go all the way to the identity one. I just want the bottom three to be zero. So the plan is get these two to be zeros, first of all. You can do that in one step. Right, that's fine. It starts with a 1, so that's perfect. If it didn't start with a 1 there, I might have rearranged them into a different order, because you can put them in any order you like. You'll still get the same solution. Or you can think of it as, if those were the equations of three planes, then it doesn't matter which order you put the planes in if you want to see where they're all intersecting. Right, so I want this to be a 0. I don't care about the rest. Well, in that case, I would subtract three of them. So if I take row 2, and turn it into row 2 minus 3 of row 1. So I'm just, you can put that down the front, you can put it wherever you like, it's just a, a matter of preferences. You can even say row 2 goes to row 2 minus, but that's beside row 2, that's sufficient. So this is what my plan is. I'm going to take the value in row 2 and subtract 3 of the val corresponding value in row 1. So 3 take away 3, that's 0, because that's what I want, and then the rest just are what they are. Negative 1 take away 6, negative 7. 2, take away 3, negative 1. 4, take away 15, negative 11. And similarly here, this time I can take row 3 and add row 1. I meant two rows, lots of row 1. So negative 2 plus 2, 0. 3 plus 4, 7. Well, that's quite handy. And then lambda plus 2. And then you've got negative 8 plus 10. So that's 2. Now, doing that, getting those first two zeros is worth a mark. So that was that transformed into an equivalent matrix. It's really just this initial one getting shuffled about, but you can't keep shuffling one in the same place, so you spread it out in time. Now, they've been done. I'm not going to bother with that. I can't simplify that anyway, and I wouldn't want to because the question is not asking for a final solution. Now, this last one, I want that to be a zero. 
so it's an upper triangular form. Don't combine one with it because that's just going to mess it up, pop something back in here and you just have ruined what you did. So it's going to be between row, row two and row three and adding them does. So if you take your row three and replace it with row three plus row two, that should do it. So adding them together, zero, zero, and two take away one, lambda plus one, negative nine. So getting it into upper triangular form is the final one. Now it's just a case of, so what would be the value of lambda for there not to be a solution? Well, you could have anything you like there just about and get a solution because what this now says is, remember the position of the variables, this says that this number times z gives negative nine. This number times z gives negative nine. So z will be nine, negative nine divided by whatever that is. So it's always going to be an answer unless it's a zero. So the final part would be there's no solution if this comes to zero. In other words, if lambda is negative one.